Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new video. And before we get started, please leave the video a like and please hit the subscribe button. We just hit 18,100. Can we get to 19,000 by the end of the year? So please hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications and give the video a like before we get started. Could the recent UK election be a giant warning sign to Democrats in 2020? Well, Michael Bloomberg of all people thinks so. And he says the UK elections are the canary in the coal mine to 2020 Democrats, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, the, the Tory party won big in Great Britain on Thursday, uh, partially because the Labour Party moved far, far to the left with Jeremy Corbyn. Now it's uh, pretty clear and it's apparent. It's been very apparent that the Democrats in America have moved far, far to the left as well. And the fact that they didn't do so well in the UK might indicate that maybe if they move too far to the left, they're going to get blown out by Trump in America as well. So former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg is calling Boris Johnson's decisive victory in Britain's election, the canary in the coal mine, why it matters. He says that the results reinforce the idea that it's simply not enough for Democrats to assume they will beat Trump next year. You have a very similar situation happening in the UK with Boris Johnson. They don't really like the guy. I mean, they they like him more than they like Trump because Trump's approval rating over there is, is absolutely down the toilet, partially because of very, very negative media coverage. But they really didn't like Boris Johnson. You have an angry, angry left there. You have a left that's moved far to the left in the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn. And still, it doesn't matter, even though uh, the hashtags vote Labour were trending, hashtag goodbye NHS after Boris Johnson won, uh, apparently shows that it doesn't really matter uh, what the social media giants say. It really doesn't matter what the media says, what the media tries to push. And I think that some Democrats are starting to realize this in America, Michael Bloomberg saying it's just not enough. You can't just use your far left ideas to beat Trump. You can't say orange man bad. And he says that he thinks Trump beating Trump is going to be difficult after the UK election where you had Boris Johnson uh, versus Corbyn could be just like a Trump versus Sanders or Warren. Biden isn't that far left, but he's definitely got a lot of other flaws He's arguably more of a globalist. He's going to be controlled by globalist interests. They're just going to do whatever they can uh, to circumvent his power in the White House, just do anything you know they want while Biden just sits there as a dementia patient serving as a placeholder. Um, that guy's not presidential material, and I think Michael Bloomberg realizes it. That's why Michael Bloomberg jumped in the race, not saying I like Michael Bloomberg. I think he is a fascist in a whole lot of ways based on what he did with soda, what he's done to try to regulate people's lives in New York. And Democrats aren't really going to like his record. And maybe his presence in the race is going to help Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders has a billionaire on stage to attack. He might have some moments. Do I think the DNC is going to let him be the nominee? No, but I think if he attacks him, he outshines. Warren could continue to lose support and fall. We could be setting up a Bernie versus Biden two-way race to the nomination in 2020. Um, so basically what he's saying, it's a catastrophic warning. Uh, Americans don't want revolutionary change. They want evolutionary change. And I'll tell you this. The Democrats are the socialists going at the speed limit. The socialists want it all done now. The Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren... They want all the reforms to happen now, and apparently a lot of people are in the middle. They don't want change that much, and I think that that's necessarily true. Bloomberg says he's electable. I don't think he's really that electable because he's not going to win the nomination. Uh, the worrisome thing about Bloomberg is he has the money. He can buy his way to the nomination, but this is something that a lot of people are seeing. Johnson won all the leave voters. Those were the voters that are kind of like the Trump-style voters. You know, they like Nigel Farage. Nigel Farage campaigned with Donald Trump in Mississippi. Then Hillary Clinton went on to make a giant speech about it, and it was a very cringeworthy speech where she literally looked like a mental patient wearing a tinfoil hat, um, talking about how frogs are evil calling Breitbart all sorts of names that it's not. And basically, when it's all said and done, that speech was one of her reasons why she was having the downfall. Uh, but that's beside the point. Speaking of Hillary Clinton, there's more speculation she'll jump in the race. I don't really know if that's going to happen. I, I mean, that would be it. That would be a very long shot to happen if Hillary Clinton decides, you know, just screw it, I'm going to jump in the race. But 
Even if she does, it's going to be one of those things, the leave versus remain, the globalist versus nationalist thing, which is just what happened in the UK. You had the globalists who didn't want Brexit. You had the people that wanted Brexit. And people say it foreshadowed Trump's victory. And well, it looks like it did. And this looks like it could foreshadow Trump's reelection. The people still wanted to leave the EU. They voted for Boris Johnson. Now, it depends who Trump's candidate that he'll be facing will be. It's probably not going to be Bloomberg. It could be Biden. It could be Sanders. It could be Warren. It doesn't look like Buttigieg is going to win. It looks like Buttigieg is kind of faltering at the moment. The fact that you already have Democrats that are openly saying, you know, beating Trump is going to be hard, it's true. Why do you think that they want to impeach him? Why do you think they're putting all their efforts into taking him out through impeachment? That's going to be tough because they know, they know, the globalists know, the, the corrupt, powerful people know that it's going to take a lot to beat Donald Trump in 2020. So they're trying to take him out the easy way, but they can't do it. And they're not going to be able to take him out the hard way either based on the fact that Donald Trump is a, is a strong candidate. People don't realize the fact he changed a lot of our electorate. He went to the Midwest uh, Republicans had struggled there in the past few election cycles, even when Bush won the popular vote by a, like three points in 2004. He didn't win Michigan, Wisconsin, or Pennsylvania, or Minnesota. Trump has a chance to win all four of those states, and I think a lot of people are starting to realize what's taken place. And the impeachment hearings, I think a lot of people, it's falling on deaf ears. If you look at the aggregate now for the support for impeachment, a lot of people are saying that they don't want impeachment now. They weren't saying that uh, a month ago or a week ago, but now the impeachment is underwater. That means a lot more people are potentially coming around it to Trump because they realize he didn't really do anything wrong. They realize that the economy is doing very well as we speak. They realize that a lot of these things are just red herrings that the Democrats are throwing out. They're a uh, Hail Mary that they're throwing while they're down by nine points with two seconds to go. Uh, even if they do get him impeached in the House... It's not going to pass through the Senate. By the way, Representative Jeff Van Drew in the state of New Jersey switches parties to today from Democrat to Republican because of impeachment. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Is he going to be able to win his primary? People aren't necessarily always that forgiving. It's going to be interesting to look at that, especially down in West Virginia where you had the Democrat switch to the Republican. But Democrats are saying, oh, everyone's leaving the Republican Party and coming with us. Trump's approval's underwater. Yet literally when you look at the metrics and you look at the fact that more politicians um, are becoming Republicans than ones that are becoming Democrats, we've seen two either statewide or U.S. officials um, do that within the span of three years. That didn't even happen in their so-called 1960s party switch narrative that they always like to throw out there. Um, but it, it really, it really is what it is. The Democrats have just continuously become a joke. And I think a lot of people, not just in the American left, but the globalist left around the world are starting to realize that they rejected Jeremy Corbyn in record numbers. Corbyn is extremely far left candidate and he goes down. Uh, he's also an anti-Semite too, I believe. That's what I've heard. Um, and the Democrats have the nerve to call Donald Trump anti-Semitic for passing the uh, anti-BDS legislation on, on college campuses for some re weird reason. They have to spin everything into one ever which way because they're so deranged. They've lost their collective minds. I, it's like every day, it's like I can't tell if the left's been this outraged. Oh, wait, there were five minutes ago. It's always something new. Apparently, you had a uh, veteran at the Army-Navy game have a doing the OK symbol, and they somehow said that was white supremacy for some reason, despite the fact we have footage of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, uh, Elizabeth Warren, AOC, uh, making the same hand gesture. It's like ridiculous. They want to change everything. Everything's offensive. And it's about time that just Americans come together and just fight back. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize this. And if you elect the Democrats, you are giving the victory to these crazy nut jobs. And a lot of the American people realize that these crazy nut jobs, they're not representative of America. It didn't work in the UK. It didn't work in the UK. And it's not going to work in 2020. And for all the people that are going to say, oh, well, Trudeau won. Yeah, well, he lost his majority uh, in Canada, which is always a cucked country, by the way. 
and it, it really, really seems like he's probably not going to be PM for much longer, and Andrew Scheer was a terrible, terrible candidate. I believe he has to step down because of corruption charges, and he still won the popular vote. Not making excuses. I don't want to change the Canadian electoral system or the American electoral system. The popular vote thing really doesn't matter to me, so if there's any liberals in the comment section that are going to hit me on that comment, well, it doesn't really affect me. A good try, though. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. Please, um, before we go, uh, donate to the Patreon. Uh, got a new Patreon. We got new benefits. You can get some new merchandise. So I'll put the link in the description for the Patreon. But donate to the Patreon. Um, follow me on social media. Join the Discord. Links in the description. But give this video a like. Comment down below. Subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Red Eagle, out.